Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Dance Life Love TV here and I am back with a vlog. I normally don't do vlogs that often but I thought that today would be a very special day and a great day to do one. I'm actually headed to downtown LA to Indie Source. And the reason why I'm headed to Indie Source is because there is um, an event going on in partnership with Startup Fashion, and it's called How to Create a Long-Lasting Relationship with Your Factory. So this event is geared towards those who um, have their own fashion startup or those, you know, who are interested to having their own fashion startup. Um, you can come out, you can a um, ask questions. It's going to be an open Q&A. Uh, I don't know how many questions I might ask um, just because I'm strictly going. I just want to be a sponge and just learn as much as I can and also network. I feel like this would be a really great opportunity to network. Um, for a little background on me, I have recently gone back to school for fashion merchandising and I've learned a lot about um, just the industry, the behind the scenes, and I've taken some business courses. So I've learned how to, um, you know, like run a startup and kind of learn some of those ins and outs of that. So I thought what a great opportunity to gain some more insight and more information as I'm studying all these things. So I'm so glad that things like this happen in LA and that I'm able to um, participate in things like this. The event was only $10 and for those who were part of the startup fashions membership on their website their entry is free so uh, I thought that was awesome that they offered that to their members but if you weren't a member of course it's just ten dollars which isn't bad that literally is like a steal to be able to come in and um, have an open discussion get a lot of information, network, and ask questions. Um, I'm so excited. I've been wanting to check out Indie Source for a while. Um, I found out about Indie Source actually through reality television. There was a show that was coming on BET called Moguls, and it had like Dame Dash, Snoop Dogg, um, Jermaine Dupri, and um, I think there was one, oh, and Birdman. So well, how I found out was Dame, one of the episodes, Dame Dash went to Indie Source and um, got some samples and stuff made with them for a clothing line he's working on. And I was really like impressed with what I saw. And when I looked them up and, and browsed through their website, I liked what I saw as well. And so I was like, you know what? I really want to check them out. I really want to go and see um, just kind of how their business operates and um, see what they have to offer. So the fact that this event is at Indie Source, it's a partnership. I am so glad. So without further ado, I'm going to get headed because I don't live in LA. So it takes me about an hour to get there. So let me hit the road so I can get there, get parked, situated and get inside. All right, guys, I will catch you when I get there. So I'm here. I made it to Indie Source. Um, it didn't take me too long. It took me exactly about an hour to get here. But um, one thing, if you do decide to visit Indie Source, um, you can keep in mind that there is a parking lot here, which is fantastic because if anybody's been to LA, particularly downtown LA, you know that parking is like one of the major issues here. So if you're able to like park in a lot or there's some parking right in front, that is a major blessing so i'm just glad to be honest i usually just pray about it because i'm like i need to park right away i don't like driving around but sometimes the sisters had to drive around as anyone else who's come to la we know the struggle but um yeah so i'm here and it's it's cool so just know that there is a secure lot here so if you do um decide to come visit indie source you're going to be able to park um i don't know how much it is i think it's probably about five or ten dollars but because i'm here at night um that might be different it is a self-parking parking lot so um you just kind of like just take the ticket park yourself and then you pay once you leave um but yeah so i can't wait to get inside um so far everything just seems really cool there's this really awesome like structure that's right here so i'll let you guys see what this is i'm not going to tell you what it is but i'll just show you when i get out but it's about like 6 54 right now so i'm probably heading in probably like a few minutes just so i can like find it and uh, get situated so all right i will see you guys inside
relationship with a production partner, and we're going to get into all of that. But first, maybe Indie Source wants to tell us a bit about what you all do, just in case anyone doesn't know and what you offer. Sure. Well, interestingly enough, one of the things that got me most, most excited when I was like reaching out to Nicole is that we basically have the same mission, which is that we both want to help emerging designers be successful. And uh, part of that does have to do with, with you know, our core focus, which is manufacturing and development, but we really look at it holistically, and there are a lot of things that um, we end up working on that are outside of that. And so uh, we started this really uh, in response to the massive demand of people that realize, oh wait, I can do this. I can start this company myself. Obviously the barrier to entry came down with e-commerce opening up, and a lot of people jumped in. But what was lacking in the industry was the technical support and the actual guidance and knowledge um, to help these brands get off the ground. Now we focus primarily in the product development and manufacturing area, but we're doing everything possible to support in every way that we can. So we've also partnered with a bunch of other people that are really strong in areas of marketing, in areas of legal IP, in areas of influencer marketing, um, and just business, kind of like business consulting, that early stage stuff where you're just trying to figure out, okay, who is my market? Who is my customer? And you know, what decisions do I need to make now so that I'm not stuck with product you know, in a couple months and realize it's not the right fit? So all these things kind of come together in a cohesive way. And that's why I'm super happy to be working with Nicole because it's just the same thing. We're both, we're both trying to do the same thing. So I'm just gonna introduce, uh, everybody can go around and introduce themselves. So my name is Zach Hurley. Um, Co-founders and the CEO of IndieSource. Hi, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Emily, uh, resident Australian. Um, I run all of our like business development, and uh, I speak to pretty much every like incoming designer that, that walks through our door and helps you get all your stuff together before really starting product development, production house. Hey, so I'm Adolfo Sanchez. I'm actually I'm not with IndieSource, but I'm a designer that is here, my unit is here as well, and I'm known probably specific, specifically mostly for evening wear and bridal. So I'm looking for any questions you can Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Sure. Hi, I'm Jesse Dombroviak, and I'm a co-founder as well as uh, handle the operations at Indie Source. So standard operating procedures, key performance indicators, are acronyms I use often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jennifer Bryant. I handle production after Emily grilled in, and then I take it from where things happen. And find like which way to go. Um, Good question. Okay. Yes. Hi. My name is Aisha Mitchell. Um, my question is basically about doing a production run. Um, but prior to getting to that point. Um, doesn't the uh, sample piece have to be made first before we can approve a production? So yes. do you guys also do the sample or you just do production? Because then I'm dealing with different Totally. Very good question. Which is and we know it's the same thing, actually, which is why we do both okay. in a big way. And we do development, I would say, our development program is much more differentiated even than our production um, because we put a lot of time and energy into it. So. We do fa fabric sourcing, we do pattern making, we do sample making, and we have a production uh, project manager that oversees the process. So one of the first things we do with you is we sit down and we have a project planning meeting. And that meeting is where you, you would give us all the information that you have about your styles. We price out everyone. The first thing we actually bring up is the retail price point. We start with retail and we back into the manufacturing price point that you decide you need based off of your business. That's so good because that's never how it's done. It's always <laughs> brands, it's your, your inclination is to say, okay, well, it costs X amount to make, so I'm going to double that and then double that again, and that'll be my wholesale price and that'll be my retail price, but then the market, nobody wants to pay that. Yeah. So the working backwards is so important, and it's great to hear that. I actually had a two-part question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and so once the um, sample is, is done and it's approved by the designer, um, don't we have to, as designers, see if this piece is actually going to get orders before we go ahead and say, give me a thousand pieces? Um, so I think before, as a designer, can actually come back to you, even after the sample is done and you love it, 
the, the best thing I think from what I was taught is that you want to make sure that you have orders first. Are you selling to stores or are no, you I, I'm not selling to stores and I'm not sure if I really want to get to that point yet. I'm very small and I'm boutique-ish and I like that sort of. I don't want to really be a big box mass production, Macy's or totally. anything like that. I'm not saying I wouldn't turn down the opportunity right. if it came to me. Well, right now, you're, the price is right. Your goal is to sell online, right? My, my goal is to sell online and then hopefully move on to a uh, storefront. Got it. Okay. So, how many asked me to say? Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, sorry. This is, this is one of my favorite things and like I get asked this every single day. Like for like we work with emerging designers every day and it's 50 at least 50 calls and so the one thing to consider is like really a marketing budget and whatever you're spending whatever your expected revenue is at minimum you should be spending 15 percent of that on market at, at the very minimum and we will always make a really great quality product but oh my gosh i've seen some ugly stuff go out this <laughs> And, but it's been really successful, and that's really subjective. Like I think it's ugly, but there are a whole bunch of people out there that think it's really amazing. So if you have good marketing on your side, there's a lot of stuff there that, that shouldn't be an issue. And yes, you're going to sit on inventory for a few months, but if you're sitting on inventory for like 12 months, and you've got a problem, and we need to start to look at, okay, which styles didn't work, and what did, and how can we change this to be more effective moving on, which is why generally brands will start off with capsule collections between like six and eight styles instead right. of like, 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. So then you can take that next season and say, okay, this one did really, really well. I want to do like four versions of this. This one didn't and I never want to see it again. And so you can make those decisions like early on with those proof of concept with small units. You don't have to order a thousand. Right. When we think about it, it's like 300 units broken down into three colors and five sizes. Right. You're looking at about 20 to 25 per skew. It's, um, it's not a lot at right. all. And proof of concept, you really, and like, doing multiple styles, you want to give your buyer like an opportunity to spend more with you. Right. So if you only have one or two styles, if you do an Instagram ad, they'll like be on your website within two clicks on their phone. Mm -hmm. And they've gone there for that one ad. But if you have like two or three other styles there, you've immediately given them an opportunity to spend like aggressively more money with you than you did with like one or two styles. Yeah. So yeah. it's definitely about what you can afford, but look at it from like that kind of bigger picture. Thank you. Thing that pushes back on there's actually two sides. There's the, what is it? What can the manufacturer do better? And then what can the brand do better? Because we both need to do a better job. We need to work better together. So on the brand side, changing is taking the work. Deciding you want something last minute or saying, oh by the way, uh, we need this type of tag, right? That's gonna push us back. We have to go and source that, right? So again, planning early and not changing your mind at the end. Um, certainly not once you begin production. Because once you begin production, there should be the communication once you be in production should only be based on timeline, not really based on approvals. Development, lots of approvals. Production, we don't, we don't have anything to talk about. We know what we're doing, right? So it should be checking in, making sure that we're, we're there. But after you approve a PPS or a TOT, there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> that, that means it's going on. Can you explain what a PPS and a TOT are? Sure. PPS is a pre-production sample. It is usually uh, the sample that we make once we get the actual production yard, and sometimes you will make a sample out of kind of what's available. Sometimes the sample, the production yardage comes back, and it's slightly different, right? Use fabric vendors, but you know you want to you want to test it out, right? You want to make sure that the, that the fabric is the same. The TOP is a top of production that's done actually after a cut, so we do, we cut the, the actual production, and then we will pull one. And we might do like a couple sizes. If you're concerned, maybe that the sizing could be off, you might do a couple of sizes. Then that's a top, it's a TOP top of production. Um, so let's see what else. Um, so you were saying what the brand needs, the designer needs to be doing to stick to timelines and then the manufacturing. The manufacturing. Okay, so uh, on the, yeah, the only other thing that I wrote down, which is interesting, um, is and this is kind of a development thing too. It's like determine. We get a really interesting range of people. Some people really want to be heavily involved, and that's okay. But just know that that's not necessarily what you're paying for, right? So some people come here, and it's almost like, you know like I, we can appreciate that you want to get an education. But um, another thing to make clear early on is like what is the level of involvement and how much are you there, right? Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about soon are questions that you can ask 
and we want to give you some really, really good questions, but some of the questions that we would ask, we don't even want you to ask because you wouldn't know the answer, right? So we want to, we want to figure out the right balance between being involved and being overly involved all right guys so i am done um it was a great event very informative there was so much information they covered all i can say is definitely subscribe to these channels um follow andy source on social media follows fashion startup um startup fashion sorry on social media as well and become a member on their site because just the community of designers coming together and just sharing information about the industry and just the manufacturing and this was just a great event um, i just had so much fun i met a lot of different people and got a lot of um, different contacts and information so a lot of photo ops so anyways i'm gonna head back it is actually raining right now and they said it never rains in southern california well it's raining right now um but anyways guys that's it i'm signing off so i will see you on the next video have a great night or have a great day if you're watching this in the daytime all right guys see you later bye